Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Awesome Sunday Show. Before we get started, we'd like to tell you where you can find us. You can find all of our episodes, including new content like blogs and guest blogs, on our newly launched website, awesomesundayshow.com. Woohoo! Our podcast is also available on iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, Stitcher, TuneIn, and YouTube. You can find all those links also on awesomesundayshow.com. You can also follow us on our social media accounts, twitter.com slash awesome sun show, facebook.com slash awesome sunday show, and instagram.com slash awesome sunday show. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy the show. You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. At Vinyl Me Please, you can celebrate one incredible vinyl record every month and send an exclusive pressing to it right to your door. They'll also include the original 12x12 album-inspired art print and a paired cocktail recipe to sweeten the deal even more. So you get a nice vinyl record to listen to. It could be any artist, something that you know you might really grow to listen to, grow to like. You get a nice cocktail with that. Nothing. What goes better? What goes good with music, Nick? Sex. <laughs> <laughs> what else goes good with music? Drugs. What else goes good with music? <laughs> Drinks. There we go. <laughs> so, uh, what else is in the box? A special edition vinyl record you can't get anywhere else. And when they say special edition, they're not messing around. They work closely with both the label and the artist to come up with something for you. Actually cannot find 
anywhere else. So exclusivity is a big point in this. They're talking colored vinyl, custom lyric books, exclusive artwork, et cetera, et cetera, personal notes from the artist. And memberships are flexible and easy, and they want to work with you. Uh, there's no cancellation fees and no hidden fees either, no guilt trips, pretty much. And it's also top shelf customer service anytime you want to call, which is pretty awesome. So remember, if you want to join Vinyl Me, Be- Vinyl Me Please for the best damn record of the month club, go to www.joinvmp.com slash awesome. One more time, you go to www.joinvmp slash awesome to join Vinyl Me Please. And for the last one. All right, today's show is brought to you by BarkBox.com. Get one free month extra of BarkBox at www.getbarkbox.com slash awesome. For you, the listeners of Awesome Sunday Show, BarkBox is offering an opportunity to receive one free extra month of BarkBox at BarkBox.com. Every month, BarkBox Paws picks the best all-natural treats and innovative toys to match a dog's unique needs, including allergies and heavy chewer preferences. All edibles are made in the U.S. or Canada, and 100% of our products are tested on animals, even our own. BarkBox is a great way to try a variety of treats and toys from local and small businesses that you may not otherwise be able to find. Free shipping on any BarkBox within the the continental U.S. When your dog falls in rove with something from the box, you can easily find it again on BarkShop.com, our app, or by texting us. To receive one month free to get BarkBox.com slash awesome. Again, that's GetBarkBox.com slash awesome to receive an extra month of BarkBox for free. Thanks, uh, Nick. My uh, name's Denise, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Denise, I didn't know you can grow a beard. Yeah. yeah. Denise, I didn't know you had a penis. You didn't know a lot about me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, gentlemen, let's get on with the show. Um as you already know, we have a very special guest with us. Nick, introduce yourself. Hey, what's up? It's me, Denise, just back from uh, Yugoslavia. It's good to be here. Uh, big fan of the show, but not Phil Facone. <laughs> <laughs> First, you're Anthony, and now you're Denise. I'm just going to be the whole family. I'm Lorraine next. <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to be the dog? Dogs. Um, I think if I was to pick... First, I'd probably be Stella because Stella was always the nicest to me. But like Luna is like a dark horse. I like Luna a lot. Uh, See, Stella is. I love. I like Stella. I, I mean, I love both those dogs. I love both of them. Yeah. But Stella is way cooler. I don't, dude. I like the attitude that Luna brings. Though. She always barks at me when I when I walk in the house. Oh, me too. Because she hates you. Yeah. So she. Well, first off, she hates everybody that walks in the house. You have to Not like me. She barks at Nick a Never lot. Never had a problem. I think. I think it's because he's a bore. They don't I, want wild animals in there. They the don't house. want these tusks. <laughs> Stella like comes up to me, like licks my ankles, and I'm like, oh my god, Stella, hey. Oh my god, I love when my ankles get licked. <laughs> <laughs> One time I like I, I, I had to spend the night at the Dentino estate. Yeah. And because um I was somewhat intoxicated, so I cannot drive home. So uh, I'm just like, yo, I'm gonna crash on your couch, man. And Dentino's like, Yeah, that's chill. So I fell asleep on his couch. I wake up and Stella's like on my chest sleeping. I don't know how she got there because she didn't climb. What an adorable presence! Yeah, honestly. And like I and like I was didn't know if someone just put her on my chest or if I drunkenly stood up and picked her up and just was like, "I'm gonna cuddle with the dog." Today. <laughs> like, I heard she could fly. Probably. Yeah, I think she has. Was that HMO two? That fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Stella has that. Luna, on the other hand, would probably like bite my neck or something. I feel like Luna is HMO four, which is strength, right? Yeah, that is yeah. strength. Yeah. 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 You're right, you're right. They are Pokemon. Yeah, they are Pokemon. Yeah. All right, so, Nick, we brought you here for a special episode. Yeah, I'm here to talk about Swordfish. Um, it's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> Swordfish, like the one hanging up in the basement, or the movie with Halle Berry and Hugh Jackman? Definitely that one, because that's right. your favorite movie. No, that's so your favorite well, movie. So well it's got a great scene it. in it, though. All right, so uh, <laughs> today's episode, we're talking about guilty pleasure movies, movies that are not liked by the general public or by movie audiences, but we somehow like or have kind of grown an appreciation for for certain aspects. There's going to be some movies that we all agree on that are guilty pleasures that we like that general audiences may not like. There's also going to be some movies that one of us will say, we're going to be like, dude, that movie sucks. How do you like that? I know there's one movie in particular you guys are going to look at me and be like, no. Suicide, Suicide Squad. Squad. Oh. <laughs> yeah, totally. I, that movie sucks. That's not a guilty pleasure. If you like that movie, you should feel guilty. <laughs> 
Damn, getting hostile totally towards yeah. the listeners. <laughs> Those good costumes. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> hey, that's an Oscar winning film, that, that right, buddy? That's an Oscar winning film. <laughs> <laughs> like, we live in an age where fucking Suicide Squad is an Oscar winning movie. Hey, fuck 2016. You man. stuffed <laughs> the ballot to get it the win. No, I switched the ballot to, to at the end. I was the, I was I was that guy. Yeah. So um, you know, in traditional awesome Sunday so sun, awesome Sunday show fashion, uh, we usually have the special guests go first. So we're gonna have to wait for a little bit for him to pull up his list. Oh, he's All already right. got it. No, you already I, got it. I got a list. All right. So Nick, um, give us start off with a movie that you really like, but you're if but like you're sitting on the couch and like. You're with a girl that you might like, or you're with your friends, and if it was on HBO, you wouldn't tell your friends that you like it. You would just change the channel. All right. Here's a really good one. Three Ninjas High Noon at Mega Mountain is... Oh, my God. I remember seeing this. Um, the ninjas are trapped in an amusement park uh, <laughs> Dude, by, some, I this movie. by some local goons, and Hulk Hogan has a serious role in it. Uh, you have Rocky, Colt, and Tom Tom back at it again at their favorite amusement park. And uh, the amusement park gets shut down. They like, uh, I'm almost positive I'm remembering this right because this was like a movie that was like one of my favorites in my childhood. But like Three Ninjas, always will like have like a special place in my heart. It's like the reason I took like karate class for like years when I was like <laughs> little. Like I like, I like loved it, man. I loved all like cheesy ninja flicks, and like that is like the go-to. And plus, like I was a huge Hulkamaniac. And seeing him in action was probably one of like the coolest things because so many of the kids were like, "You're not like the real like." I guess he was like one of like like a like a TV hero or something yeah. like that. Like, you're not this. You're just an actor. And then he starts like <laughs> kicking like goon ass, and then they're like, "Oh my god, he is yeah. real!" Yeah, it's like the typical like corny thing. Like he's like uh, shit. Like uh, what was that character's name in uh, Jimmy Neutron? That was the actor, but he was also a secret agent in real life. Oh my. This is gonna piss me off. We'll we'll remember it at the end yeah. towards the end. But like uh <laughs> I'm glad that you knew what that show was. Uh no, I actually remember that. I haven't seen that movie in forever. I've seen all the three ninjas, but I haven't seen them since I was yeah. eight years or younger. But it's such a guilty pleasure, honestly, because yeah. you look at those they're terrible movies. Oh, they're like, awful. I I mean I, I I won't lie, like I liked them as a kid too. Me too. But I, that's why I'm afraid to watch it because I'm like, oh fuck, I actually like this. I was this kid, you yeah. Know? Um, I'll do like, here's like an adult one, I guess. Um, I really enjoy Rocky four a lot and a lot of people give Rocky four, like a lot of slack, but like, man, I think Ivan Drago is awesome. Um, I love like the whole concept of like Apollo Creed dying in the beginning. And it was like this, like whole spoilers, spoiler. Sorry. If you haven't seen it by now, like it's 30 or something <laughs> years old. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but there's so many just like classic like lines in it when he's just I must break you. Yeah, it's a well. It's the, I enjoy Rocky IV. You I enjoy like, Rocky IV. I enjoy too? Rocky IV okay. too. It's 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 probably like, I mean I know Rocky V as for I'm I, I'm a big Rocky fan. I've seen all the movies a million times. Yeah. Um, like and I I enjoy every movie. I really yeah. do. Uh, a lot of fans hate Rocky V the most, and uh, as do I. But I think if you're gonna look at it as a movie, as far as when it comes to um, like production and storytelling, Rocky yeah. Four is clearly the worst one. It really is, but it's awesome. It's awesome. It is so good. There's a fucking robot that sings "Happy Birthday, Polly." <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you brought up that movie. Yeah, and I... like, dude, the, the 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 song's catchy. It's it's an '80s movie. It's got like one-liners, communists, love... communists. <laughs> it's like like perfect like cold war like type movie you have like everything um what else like i love like the the montages of like them training you have like ivan drago who's like this like superhuman like almost yeah. with, like all these getting different injected. probes and getting injected yeah and all this different stuff running with like the oxygen mask and then you have rocky like just in the arctic tundra just chopping wood <laughs> climbing through the snow just, on fire. Just, yeah i get if that doesn't get you hyped i'm sorry like dude it's on my playlist it's so it, cool. like i listen to it when i go to the gym sometimes oh man you need to wear like one of them like cut mesh shirts <laughs> 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 like something you know dude like that movie like if someone like came to my door and was like i'm gonna like chop lumber in your backyard but i'm gonna make it like so it's like a training facility but outdoors yeah i would be like yeah, I, I will totally train out there every day. I would like bench press logs. 
that, know? That, there's nothing more manly than that. No, nothing. Think. Honestly, that's as hardcore as it gets. That yeah, that's that's a great choice. That's actually a really good choice. Here, I'll throw another one. Um, that's like a comedy, uh, just to kind of change the dynamic. Hot Rod is like one of my favorite movies. Um, yeah, it's listed as like. It's like a not a good movie, I'm assuming. But, no, it's uh, it's not a good movie. It doesn't really tell a story. But to be honest with you, it is one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in my life. And the jokes are great. Agree. And yeah. on the humor behind it, like not ve- not many movies actually like make me like laugh out loud per se. Like to the point where I'm like really laughing at the movie. It's just like I enjoy it. Yeah. I, I was like literally in tears like throughout this movie. Like the scene of him falling down the hill was like where it started, and then like everything richardson just the guy that dances and just throws flyers at people and just air humps there's so i quote that movie like every week easily just he's like it's great like it's so fucking funny and even though it doesn't really i mean it kind of tells a story it doesn't do it in the best way but it does what it set out to do and it will entertain the fuck out of you yeah it's like that's a movie you can't really have and i mean this in a nice way like you can't have high expectations for it's no yeah uh it's it's just a funny movie. Like I don't go in there expecting like the meaning of life. There's yeah, there's so many funny parts to it too. Like when he's just like I'm jumping the pool tomorrow, and then like every little scene is perfect. Yeah, like, I love when he's in the liquor store. Like after he fails at everything, and he just fills up a whole shopping cart just like with hard liquor bottles, and he just keeps putting more and more on. <laughs> and then he finally gets like hit by like by a van randomly in the parking lot. Or like Bill Hader getting the piece of metal just stuck in his head because he like he's what, tripping on acid yeah, or something. And take he's like, some of this acid, yo, dude, Rod, you're actually like a good friend, man. <laughs> <laughs> we just ran over a small bus. We just ran over a small bus right there. And he's like, "Hospital trash can." And he points to the hospital. And he goes, "Thanks." <laughs> and walks in with like a briefcase and like just like starts fighting the nurses as soon as he gets in. Like the movie's pretty pointless honestly but like oh yeah but and bill Hader is great though oh yeah. danny mcbride's amazing in it too yeah that's right he's in it yeah. who am i supposed to build ramps for who am i supposed to build ramps for now the, like when they're like <laughs> doing the aquatic training and they basically just drown him in a pool it's such a <laughs> like it's such a weird group of people yeah it really it, is it, it's like the lonely island meets like i don't know like seth rogan's crew i guess kind of yeah it's like ah uh, it's like it's so there's some like SNL and some Seth Rogen crew in there. Yeah, definitely. You know? Whole like Lonely yeah. Island like thing. Yeah. So many ran- like Will Arnett's in that movie. Like Isla Fisher's in that movie. There's like a bunch of like randoms. Like oh uh, yeah, yeah. If you like Hot Rod, you should see the Lonely Island's latest movie, Pop Star. It's fucking hysterical. I've never I never seen saw it. it. Yeah, you should. It's really funny. I got definitely check that out. All right, um, Pat. Did you want to go or you want me to go or it doesn't matter? I, I'm gonna say too that I know. You have given me flack for it before, but I don't give a shit because they are entertaining as bad as they are, which I freely admit. The two live-action Scooby-Doo movies, especially the second one. I think the second one is better because it was written by James Gunn. So bad. They Dude, are terrible movies. and I like those movies. And the effects in them are terrible, but they're entertaining. Dude, the first one, I, I remember getting the first one like on DVD like <laughs> when it came out. And that isn't like uh, Mark McGrath from Sugar Ray like has like a cameo yeah, in it. Yeah, he's evil in it. Yeah, yeah. He's and then, dude, guys. like uh, Isla Fisher's in it. And she goes, Yeah, you know what her says fucking to, name is? Mary Jane. Yeah, and, wow. Dude, it was such a stupid joke. But Shaggy's just like, like that's my favorite name. Like playing on his uh, stoner yeah. persona. And you know what? Say what you will, but Matthew Lillard as Shaggy and Linda Cardinelli as Velma are a Perfect casting. No, yeah, I I will give those movies this is that the casting is great and Scooby Doo looks like a CG dump uh, that came out of my butthole. But I mean, the voice is right. I yeah, will say that right. the voice is right. But like, all right, I really love Scooby Doo. I love the original series. I love um, the the newer series where it had all like the pop punk songs mm-hmm. in it, like Sun Forty One and Blink One Eighty Two or whatever or something. I like that, that was on Kids WB. I I love a pup named Scooby Doo, even though yeah. that's like not really like a a fan favorite show. I like a pop name. And then um, the one with Vincent Price is really good too. Um, fucking, uh, I can't remember the name of, of course. I'm saying I'm like, I love Scooby Doo, but uh, and I like that series. I- but like the, the the problem that I had with the first Scooby Doo movie is actually like a, a, a story <laughs> problem. Like none of the, even though the cast is perfect. I'm sorry. Like I don't mean to like go on a Scooby Doo rant here, but uh, none of the none of the characters are like are the characters that we grew to love. And like from the series, first off, they always tolerated Scrappy Doo, all the time. Even though he was the worst part of like the Scooby Doo crew. I know, and they're just 
they're making fun of how shitty he was when he was introduced. But, but they literally like throw a puppy on the side of the road. Listen, I would throw a scrappy dude. I would, yes, too. I would too. I'll tie him in a bag and gang. throw him in a river. And then him being the villain at the end, spoilers, like was just fucking terrible. And like I saw that coming. Like yeah, but the a second one, away. the second one is better because it's more closely related to what the show was because yes. it was actual, you know, a guy behind these. Even though he did create monsters, and uh, yeah. Seth Green was great in it. But another problem I had that movie was was the story was the twist was so weak. It was like uh, I I knew right away that Alicia Silverstone was the fucking uh, I just I can't I can't go on. All right, well I know I think you they're like inter- they're entertaining. Yeah, they're not fine. great movies by <laughs> want, any means. I, I know, I know, and I, I'm giving you flack. I'm giving you a lot of flack when I name my movies. I want I thought you. Thought this to, was a safe space. It, it is a safe space, and I'm I'm telling you, you can return the favor tenfold when I name oh, the movies no, that you don't like. Yeah. Um. Another two, the I don't know if you guys have ever seen them, Hot Shots Part Th- One and Part Two. Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby Doo. Sorry, okay. Hot Shots Part One and Part Two with uh, Charlie Sheen. Oh, those, uh, yeah, <laughs> those they're are fun. they're so <laughs> bad, but they're fucking hysterical. Part, part Two is way better. <laughs> like, it is, it's, but yeah. it's like, have you ever seen them? I've never seen them. All right, so they're like parody movies is making... that what he's the commando yes is that, that yeah. kind of like making fun of rambo yeah making fun I, of rambo I, and I, like I, platoon and stuff i could picture it in my head but and I, it, I they're just so ridiculous and so stupid but it's like i'll laugh like the entire time because just <laughs> how absurd it is uh great movies um yeah those are guilty pleasures because they're they're not good movies no they're not good but, movies but they're entertaining but, and going off on that is scary movie three I yeah. love Scary Movie. The last, yeah. the last so good funny. Scary Movie. It was, and it's better than Scary Movie Two, and I, I it's not so. as good as the first one. The first, first one's the best. The first it, one's a good movie, though. Like but it's funny. The best line in Scary Movie Two is "Grandma Strong Hand." Oh yeah, with that's the guy great, with one hand. Yeah. Like that is the best thing in the entire Scary Movie the, series. The, well, I'm gonna tell you, yeah. Scary Movie Three has the best line at any of the Scary Movies. All of them put together, even though it's not the best Scary Movie. Mm-hmm. Is when they make fun of the scene in Signs when Mel Gibson sees his dead wife in the car crash, oh, yeah. where it's, it, where Charlie Sheen walks by and the guy that hits the that hits his that hits his wife he goes, "Hey Tom, I need to ride home later." <laughs> like, right after he just fucking killed his wife in a DUI, like, that was like Ryan Wolfbank, another uh, awesome Sunday Show regular. Um, like we talk about that line like randomly out all the time. Like he'll uh, we'll just like look at each other and be like, "Hey Tom, I need to ride home tonight." Like it just like we know exactly what we're talking and about. And then when he when he's asking the, like the EMT or the police officer if he can <laughs> like what parts are split and using all the different foods yeah. to do it, and then he's like trying to signal if he could still have sex with the lower part with a hot dog and a donut. <laughs> Honestly, like that movie was like that movie was killed by the critics and like. I don't think. I mean, it, all of them were really. The first one was what did semi well, mm-hmm. like better than most comedies do. Yeah. And yeah, honestly, like that movie, like I don't understand how people don't find that funny. Like, Scary Movie Three is funny. I can see if it you don't like it that one. much, but like yeah, you can't say it's not funny in some instances. Like especially like some of the jokes, are, and it's the last scary movie to not shovel any like as much as they can in for yeah. for jokes yeah, or they, for pop they culture took, references. Like, they actually a, took a their small time. amount of movies and then did it instead of throwing in like thirty movies at right. once. Because the scary, because scare ever since uh, the first one, the scary movies have always been like not parrying one movie in particular, but they use one movie's plot as the main source. Yeah. Where a scary movie three was clearly signs and, and the like ring. and the, the ring, ring. The yeah. Ring, yeah. And the ring, and they kind of mixed that together. Whereas the first one was clearly Scream, but they also did like I know what you did last summer, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. like a little bit of like nods to the slasher movies. So they've always been like that. But it's Scary Movie Three was the last one for it to be like we're not gonna sho- we're gonna stop you know shoving so many references yeah. down your you know because the, new- the newer ones they tried like pumping in like I feel like as many movies as possible like they thirty did, movies like, at a time. They did like a bit with Saw. Remember the one with Shaq that, yeah. and Doctor Phil? They did that. Uh, they did like War of the Worlds. I remember it was like a big concept. Yeah, I think that right? was the fourth one, right? That was the fourth one. It was like the iPod. Remember, like a oh yeah, it was horrible. And yeah. then they did like date movie, disaster movie, Those Meet Spartans. the Spartans. Oh yeah. my god, vampires suck. Yeah, I have Meet the Spartans. And now, I saw now that in theaters. those guys, the ones who did like the most recent ones, that the shittiest ones, are doing a Star Wars one. Oh, yeah, man. which Connor's friends. Yeah, totally. All right, Connor, why don't you name some? Okay. Good choices, by the way, uh, yeah, no. besides the Scooby-Doo ones. <laughs> All right. Well, I said guilty pleasure. Dude. All right, so this I want to start off with one. Like, I have 
I have a lot of Schwarzenegger movies, <laughs> but I'm a, I but I love Arnold Schwarzenegger. So he's just a guilty pleasure in general, but especially his bad movies. Uh, I'm gonna name two movies that I like that I legitimately like. One that most people think is bad. The other one people like because they because they think it's bad. But I'm gonna argue that it's a good movie. Um, okay, so the first one that I mentioned before is X Men: The Last Stand, the third one. Mm. I actually like that movie. Mm-mm. The only the biggest problem with it I is don't, like, hate it. I hate uh, yeah, it. the the biggest problem with that movie is that it doesn't amount to anything. Like, there's no payoff whatsoever. It's like everything that they were building up. No storyline pays off. Yeah, the first two movies are just. It's nothing. like the Mass Effect three of the X Men movies. <laughs> <laughs> like. Yeah, but at least Mass Effect 3 had great gameplay. Yeah. <laughs> X-Men well, The Last Stand didn't have shit. Ruined Dark Phoenix, which is one of the most legendary comic book stories. It did It did that. Completely ruined it. Um, it completely negated any character development and any, you know, really building arcs from the first two movies. It threw away, like, not what Magneto true. became. That's not very true. Like, there's certain things that are, mm-hmm. that are, like, you're totally right about the Dark Phoenix. Screwed up. That ending was is terrible. Like I said, it doesn't amount. It, there's not, it not amounted to nothing. Nothing changed. Mm-hmm. Literally, it was like it just like it, it, and that's why that's what that was one of the biggest problems of the Wolverine. Besides the ending, was like the fact that like what what, what Wolverine had to do at the end. Well, I mean, the movie is like over ten years old. Mm-hmm. Wolverine has to kill Jean Grey, the yeah. Dark Phoenix, which sounds like it does it amounts to something, mm-hmm. but it really doesn't because not. Uh, Nothing's changed. No, the outcome has not changed. Like there's no like like mutants are still in the same spot as they yeah. were, as a as a general as a general population. And but the good things about that movie are really good. And like that's like, why like Kelsey Grammer as Beast. Okay. Wolf, yes. I agree with that. Uh, Wolverine. I actually really like uh, his character in this one and like and what he has to go through. Mm-hmm. Um, also, the opening scene where they visit Jean Grey as a child is. Superb! One of the best scenes out of any X Men movie. It was very good. Uh, I also <clears throat> really liked. Pat- I think Patrick Stewart's performance was really underrated in that movie. He gets a lot of screen time. Um, All right, but you're, it's it's Patrick Stewart. It's Patrick Stewart. Um, also, too, uh, the dynamic between Cyclops and Logan in that movie I think is very well done, and it's actually that's I feel like that was something that was earned from the first two movies. And, and then they I, killed Cyclops off screen. Yeah, they killed Cyclops off screen, which was dumb. But that was that was well done. Um, I also really appreciated the scenes between uh, Iceman and Kitty Pride, and also like I thought Rose character was fleshed out better than any of the movies I've ever done in the X and X Men Three. As far as when it comes I, I, to, I don't think the first three movies did Rogue really any justice. They didn't. In, in, and if, that's if, why if you're thinking about Rogue from the comics <coughs> and from the TV show, the original animated mm-hmm. TV show, you're right. But as far as when it comes to just the movie itself. The first one kind of follows her, but she's just kind of like she doesn't really change. She's just this yeah. scared girl, and like they use her for as a plot device. The second movie, she kind of is just there with Iceman, but it kind of explores, uh, you know, Iceman's feelings and like uh, him coming out to his parents as a mutant, which is obviously a metaphor for a kid coming out to, uh, to gay as his parents, uh, to his parents. Uh, but in the in the third movie, like I thought, it explored their relationship the best as far as like being a young you know teenage couple, and but then like you know her never being able to touch him and like going towards like the mutant cure, quote unquote. Which so it kind of and so there's a moral dilemma there. So I really think there's a good movie inside X Men Three. There's just a lot of shit that bogs it down, but the stuff that's good is really enough for me to like it, and I I I, I can recommend X Men Three. I don't recommend it. Yeah, that's why I said like you no. can and you can shit on it all you want. Brett Ratner sucks. And Brian Singer made a huge mistake going to direct Superman Returns. Oh, yeah, and that movie blows. <clears throat> Your friend. Lifts, lifts a whole island made of kryptonite. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> Makes oh, sense. Oh, God. <laughs> Makes sense. And, like, you would think, like, in Batman vs. Superman, not to go back to that. We won't talk about it, I promise, for the, except for this one part. I thought Is it was that... your guilty pleasure movie. <laughs> no. 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 Okay. no. Okay. It's like, all right, like, Superman, like, lifting a kryptonite island is du- – or kryptonite continent is stupid – so let's just have him pick up a kryptonite spear, like, and that won't piss anybody off. Oh, all right. So anyway, all right. And uh, the second movie I have, um, unless you guys want to talk about more about X Men Three and why you don't no, like no, it. No, no, no. Go ahead. Uh, all right. I really will argue to the day that I die that Commando, where Arnold Schwarzenegger, is a great movie. I like that movie. But like, do you like it because you think it's bad and it's cheesy, or do you like it because you think it's good? I think it does cheese very well. 
Okay. Like I appreciate that. Think, I agree with. Yeah. yeah. Like it is very cheesy, but in a good way. I think it's a movie that's aged very well. Yeah. I've never seen Commando. All right. I'm telling you, like you like Rocky Four because like the dumb one liners and like yeah, the cheese. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Every other line in Commando mm-hmm. is a one liner. So it's probably amazing. And it has the best line out of any movie I've ever heard, ever written from pen to paper and spoken to word and captured on a film and shown to an audience. So, like, there's the, the you know the plot of the movie? No. So, Arnold Schwarzenegger is like an ex, like, special ops army guy. So like, like, he is in like every movie. Like, like he is in every movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, like, he retires and he takes care of his daughter, like, in the middle of nowhere. And it's just like, it's like they have this, like, perfect life. The opening, like, shots are just like him, like, carrying logs, like, flexing his muscles. But then, like, the next <laughs> shot, he's like feeding a deer with his daughter. Like, he's like this big, strong man, but he's like sensitive. Like, it's just yeah. like totally, like, hams it in. And, uh, <laughs> so, like a uh, some like dictator hires a bunch of people and like kidnaps his daughter to force him to 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 do to do something that like I to, to kill the prime minister that overthrew him. Mm-hmm. So because like John Matrix is the best. His name's John Matrix because uh, he's like the best of the best. John Matrix. Yeah. So <laughs> but it's, but he <laughs> he doesn't do it obviously. Yeah. So they're gonna kill his daughter in like twelve hours. So he has to get to them before he kills his daughter. And it's fucking awesome. But the line I'm talking about is, like, there's a, an ex-Green Beret that he has to fight. And it's actually the black guy from Predator. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, who is actually my favorite character in Predator. Like, the, out of all of those group of guys, him and Jesse Ventura. Um, Love Jesse Ventura. Yeah, he, uh, he, like, he looks at Arnold and he goes, he goes, surprise, motherfucker. He's like, this Green Beret is going to kick your ass. And Arnold Schwarzenegger looks at him and goes, I eat Green Berets for breakfast, and right now I am very hungry. And then, like, <laughs> proceeds to kick his ass. <laughs> it's the best line I've ever heard. There's no line better than that. It's it's incredible. It's, like, it's literally an incredible line. And it's a – dude, like, the movie is, like, so cheesy. Like, the, it, it's one of those movies that it does so much wrong that it's somehow right. Okay. I can't explain it. Yeah, like a two negatives equal a positive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know what it is. Like, it's just great. It's a great movie. He never misses, and he never gets shot. Perfect. Biggie backing off that, what do you think of Last Action Hero? I like that movie. All right, me too. That's on yeah, my that's list. actually on my list. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is a wildly entertaining movie. It's Oh, it's great. Well, yeah. I think it's great, but it's it's not a good movie. No, no by no, any no, no. means. Like I would never. That's a movie where it's like if someone was like Connor, what do you suggest for a movie? Like Last Action Hero is not coming up. Like that's something like I watch <laughs> by myself and like it's on Cody. Like, yeah, yeah. Snyder, did you want to name another one? Uh, yeah, I have I have a couple I could definitely rattle off. Um, you know what's annoying? Like I was looking like. We talked about it, like a little briefly before, mm-hmm. but like we were talking about like on like a lot of like these websites, like how they're like saying certain movies are guilty pleasures, but mm-hmm. like they really aren't because they're, they're damn means. good movies. Yeah, dude. To be honest with you, The Warriors is one of my <laughs> favorite movies. It's it's in my top five ever, and it's like listed on like that website as like one of like the big guilty pleasure movies. And I get that it's like a cult following kind yeah. of movie, and I get that like I guess if you watch it like now, you might think certain things are corny. Mm -hmm. I guess per se, but like in that time period, I feel like it fits in very well with like the late seventies kind of vibe. And like overall, it is like one of my favorite movies. I, I love that movie. That's a great movie. And everyone I've ever talked to says like they enjoy that movie. So like when I see that, I, I find it kind of weird. Yeah. I think it's well also on that. Cause I saw a list with that was on that. Like somebody put Fargo Godfather two. And like, I think it was ranker ranker. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck ranker. That website's garbage. Um, yeah, but you said one before that all three of us put on our list that has to do with a shark or sharks. All right. To the audience, I am a huge fan of bad shark movies, and Deep Blue Sea is definitely... Deep Blue Sea is fucking great. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> it, it's probably one of the worst movies I've ever seen, but holy shit, I it I will laugh at it every time. It's it's a movie that is just like... All right, so the guy that directed that movie, his name is Rennie something. He actually started off, uh, like a lot of directors um, and a lot of people in the, uh, in the film industry, he directed Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4 or Part 5. And he also has directed, like, a few other, um, like, offshoot, but, like, box office success movies. He directed Deep Blue Sea. 
Yeah. And like it totally shows. <laughs> like, Dude, a deep it's so <laughs> it's so bad, bad, but man do I love it. There's like first off, Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson, the scene where he is eaten just randomly out of that little portal. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? I'm sorry. Rennie Harlan is his name. Rennie Harlan. Yeah. He's, he's giving this today. huge speech. He's and like, then... we're going to get out of here. Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, everything is safe. We have nothing to worry about. And his, he just, like, looks over this, like, little circular pool. And this massive shark just comes and rips him apart and just pulls him in. <laughs> it just comes out of nowhere. And I think who stole the show of Deep Blue Sea is LL Cool J. Yes. As the cook. He is the best character of the entire thing. Like, what... Can he swim in that? Like, he can't swim? Yeah, he can swim. He can swim yeah, he, he doesn't swim well. He just kind of swims. I'm trying to, like, remember, like, Dude, Deep Blue Sea. Just LL because, Cool like, J is the man, whether he's in Deep Blue Sea or cool. not in Deep Blue Sea. But my favorite part about him is that he has a bird named Bird. Yeah, the bird is amazing. Yeah, And Thomas <laughs> Jane just peeing off the friggin' uh, into the ocean <laughs> when you're first introduced to him. Yeah. Yeah. The shark throwing the scientists into the window, like it's <laughs> incredible. Yeah, that is a. Oh my god! Like, that's a movie or like that, that's one of those movies is like because people always come up to like Pat and I and say like, hey, like what's a good movie? Mm-hmm. Deep Blue Sea is a movie I really enjoy, but I would never tell somebody that it's a good movie because then they would never think I'd know good. They never trust. Yeah, they would never trust. You, yeah, trust you got to say, well, do you want to watch a shitty movie that's actually really entertaining? Deep Blue Sea. But a lot of people don't get that. Yeah. Like a lot of people don't get. <laughs> Like a bad movie, like a movie that's so bad it's good. Yeah, that's yeah, true. I get that. My like, I think I get that from like my like dad. My dad's like huge into like bad shark movies, and like they're always on. And like Deep Blue Sea was definitely the one that stood out. Sci-fi to me. has a new one every week. <laughs> Those sci-fi channel movies are great. Uh, but the best one I ever saw was uh, but two of them were really, that I really I liked: Bone Eater and uh, Ice Spiders. Uh. uh what you call it? Um, mega, uh, mega shark versus mega giant o- yeah. mega shark versus giant octopus. Yes, that's it. That is the, that's the one where the shark jumps and takes down the plane in the air. Yes, correct. Is that yep. the one with uh, Steve Urkel? He's in one of those mega. mega He's shark in a few ones. of them. He's yeah. actually yeah. I don't know. Shark Attack Three Megalodon was another good one. Um, Lake Placid, like three. Yeah, um, Crocosaurus. Is another is another really I good one. I may have seen that. That's the, that's the one where a guy like literally picks up a, a thing of dirt and throws it for defense. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I guess we can get into like the Sharknado movies, which I've seen all of them. I've I've only seen the first. But one. those aren't really guilty pleasure movies. Yeah. Because like they're meant to be bad. Like they're meant to be entertainingly bad. Like yeah. they do that stuff on purpose. Like I, it's called Sharknado. Yeah. Like, crying out loud. Like if you go into like the movie and you're like, this is gonna. Win Sharknado me. four has Gilbert Gottfried, <laughs> and he goes. <laughs> It's a, there's a cow NATO in it. That's perfect. Oh my god, it's ama- it's great. I feel like they purposely like casted him just for like that reason, just to say something outrageous yeah. at some point in the movie. Um, all right, I, I have another one. Um, I was a big fan of Fifty First Dates. It's an Adam Sandler movie <laughs> with Drew Barrymore. A lot of people make fun of me for that, but I've seen this movie hundreds of times. Um, I personally love this story i think i first saw it when i was like maybe like 13 i watch it with my mom a lot and we eat ice cream together and watch it um it's a classic love story <laughs> now i can't make fun of you because <laughs> that's like nice you just, yeah you just had to make it sentimental yeah. yeah do you remember like do you know what it's about like she drew yeah, barrymore has it. has short-term memory loss because she was in an and accident she can only remember it's, she can only remember like every day like it's something new so he like tries something new to like i really don't like day. that movie <laughs> i love that movie dude. i don't like it and i hate drew barrymore it's such I don't it's know, amazing it's, a, it's like if like you took the bad adam sandler comedy and then mix it with a cheesy lifetime movie yeah well you like spanglish all right that's your favorite adam sandler movie <laughs> i don't think it's that bad <laughs> no he loves jack and jill jack- no oh. no one likes jack and jill no one likes jack and jill not even al pacino likes jack and jill and he's in that movie <laughs> well, al pacino doesn't like good movies anymore so it doesn't matter yeah you think spanglish is better than 50 first dates yeah dude what really <clears throat> yeah dude 50 first dates sucks i mean 50 first dates rules Love that movie. All right, like, dude. First of all, I know there's people out there that think it. Yo, I'm don't sure there is. Don't be afraid to share your opinion. It's just like, dude. I don't know. It's 
again, if you like Lifetime movies, that's that's perfect. Like, God bless you. Do, do what I you I will do. say but that the brother in it is really fucking funny. Though. Sean Astin. Yeah. Yeah, Sean yeah. Astin was great like in it, whole... how he's taking steroids. And his list was coming in, he's having nocturnal emissions and stuff. Dude, the, uh, sure. <laughs> that was really funny. And then I also thought the old man that sits in the, the breakfast, uh, like the little <laughs> diner they have on, like the, like, the little Hawaiian island, says, like, the funniest, like, one-liners. He's like... Are you done with that napkin so I can have something to wipe my ass with? And it's like, <laughs> like the funniest stuff. He's like trying to draw like a picture to yeah. like show her. He's like, it Dude. was just like the movie was so corny as far as like her like you know, always waking up like not remembering anything. It was just such like, it was just such a draw for people who like those type of movies, uh, and I, I consider that kind of like a cash grab. But I mean, I I I, I would be a hypocrite for not liking certain cash grabs, but. Uh, I really hated the ending to Fifty First Dates. Like, really hated it. How he pretty much had those are held hostage. More yeah. Or less. Like they like have it. She like never recovered. Like a movie like that. That's that cheesy. Like you might as well just go with an ending that that satisfies everybody. And like the movie kind of ends like in like in an ambiguous like, oh my god, she's gonna wake up every day like not knowing a life with the videotape yeah and it's just uh, it just was be like i don't want these fucking kids yeah like what if she wakes up one day she's like i don't want my fucking daughter like i, I don't know like or, or who are you like you look weird adam sandler like yeah egghead she paints that <laughs> photo of him as the egg yeah she clearly loves him it's just i don't know i really didn't like that i mean again like uh, this is this is a safe zone but i'm not going to not share my opinion which I, again with my movies i want you guys to not sh- to share your opinion yeah no you've clearly shit on me for that one so uh <laughs> yeah, let, me, let me throw another one in there snakes on a plane is definitely a guilty pleasure great movie great movie great movie i very, agree great movie very entertaining snakes on a plane is one of the most entertaining movies i've ever seen honestly it's it's so funny yeah and like Everyone's great. Like Samuel Jackson is classic. He's just yelling obscenities, and it's like probably the one of the best lines ever. Is like I'm yeah. tired of these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. Like everyone says that. Nobody says motherfucker as cool as Samuel L. Jackson. No one. No one does. Um, I, I thought I will say though, if you're gonna watch it, watch it on when it's on TV because the like the replacement words they use for the curse words is just hysterical. Like the, there's one I don't remember it exactly, but it has to do with something like um, t- white t-shirt wearing monkeys or monkeys wearing t-shirts instead of motherfuckers, and it's just excellent. But the movie itself, it's so ridiculous. Yeah, but it's hysterical. I would suggest seeing it uncut. I don't know. I just I do agree with like sometimes like when they replace curse words in movies, it's it's like unintentionally funny. Like when they do like for Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo, a guilty pleasure. Uh, like whenever someone says asshole in that movie, they replace it with airhead. <laughs> <laughs> airhead. <laughs> like, like it's just <laughs> like what are you a four year old? Yeah, like, come on. <laughs> like, oh my god, Keenan Thompson's in that movie too, and he lands the plane. He pretends that he's like he's like yeah, I, I can land this plane. He's like I play a PlayStation. That's like literally what he says. Yeah, it's so dumb. It's uh, and I I, I don't. There's a scene where a snake bites a guy's dick, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. where he's, ha- he's he's there, he's like banging in the, in yeah, the bathroom, and it, oh and it also yeah, bites yeah. the girl's tit. Yeah, it does right, yeah. right on the nipple. He does. <laughs> oh, oh, dude, my that favorite sucks. part though is like when that one snake. I mean, aside from getting biting the chick on the nipple and the dude on the dick, is when it just eats that fucking little annoying chihuahua. Dude. Yeah. Dude, that and there's like one really bad one where there's like the semi bad guy. He's like the bald guy in the mm. suit. He gets like eaten by that like massive snake, like from like the head. Like it starts eating his head and then works its way down, and it yeah, goes like yeah, over yeah. the top of his dome and just goes. Oh my god! I remember seeing that and I was like, "Ew!" Honestly, it, I I'm not a big snake person. Like snakes kind of freak me out. They're like one of my big fears. And like seeing that scene, oof, that was rough. Yeah, was definitely rough. I was like afraid to sit on like the toilet for like a week. Ah. Uh. I was like when I was a kid, I was kind of afraid of sinks because because of it. But like, I'm not watching that movie. I've never seen it. I've never any time. Yeah, because you don't it. like clowns. They're horrifying. So you won't see the it remake. Absolutely not. I feel like you should come on and the podcast after you watch that movie with us. That's that's like therapy. Like that's. <laughs> I just like the idea behind snakes on a plane. Like that's how he wanted to kill like a witness. 
was release venomous snakes on a plane. Yeah, and it's like, just so stupid right. itself. Like, There's so much easier <laughs> ways to kill somebody than just release snakes on a plane. Like he literally just could have put a bomb on the plane. Yeah, <laughs> like that's too mainstream. Man. But yeah. but you know what? I'm glad. Like the movie knew exactly what it was and was not ashamed of it, and that's why it's worth watching. And the title "Snakes on a Plane" like that's just all it is. You yeah. know, it's it's perfect. All right, so a movie that I really want to say, and if you've ever seen Ted, you understand what I'm talking about, is the uh-huh. Flash Gordon movie. Oh, my God, yeah. Flash. Oh, Soundtrack so is amazing. Incredible. Queen. It's Queen. And, dude, yeah. all right, so, like, the movie has such hammy performances, um, except from all the – except for the British actors. Like, they're they're great, mm-hmm. it's, which is normally the case. Um, like, uh, Timothy Dalton's actually, like, not that bad in it. Uh, and the guy that plays like the bird, he's also Gimli in Lord of the Rings. You're right. And uh, even though he's not British, uh, Max von uh, Sydow plays Emperor Ming, and his performance is actually good. All those performances are good. Everyone else is I, like, which is like ninety percent of the cast, fucking blows. <laughs> and the special effects are so cheesy. And like my favorite, They're my so bad. My favorite line delivered in that movie because because of how bad it is is when the guy that plays Flash Gordon, he's like Flash Gordon, quarterback for the New York Jets, and like, <laughs> it, and like it's like what a random thing to announce. <laughs> Just announcing to like some awful yeah. being. Like ima- like imagine saying your name and then your job. Like okay, yeah, thanks. Right, it's like cool. Yeah. Like, Nick Snyder, Brave New World. Like okay, thank you. <laughs> It's like you have to like read like a piece. That's terrible, honestly. And like I love like that's just the concept that it's a quarterback of like the, the New York Jets like saving like the world, pretty much like that. Because quarterback, any quarterback of the Jets, with the exception of Joe Namath, apparently, uh, can't do shit to save the team themselves. So it doesn't yeah. matter. Nope, <laughs> ain't yeah. gonna save the world. Oh my god, that's a really good one. I really like that one. I yeah, yeah. I I have one. Um. Do you guys like Balls of Fury? Okay, yes, that is a. Yeah. I didn't even think about that movie, but that is a guilty pleasure. It's bad. <laughs> I don't like that movie, dude. So many scenes crack me. It's up. funny though. Christopher Walken's amazing in that movie. I like him a lot, and there are just certain scenes like, I don't know what his name is, but the old Asian man, he he's in other things. I know. Yeah, that. he's um he was um. He was Lil Pan in Big Trouble in Little China. Maybe. Did you ever see Big Trouble in Little China? No. That's another movie you would love. All right, you. I gotta get you onto Kurt Russell movies. Yeah, I, I don't really watch too many Kurt Russell movies. Honestly. There's a lot of Kurt Russell movies that you haven't seen that I'm gonna show you. Yeah, I I would definitely check it out. I definitely want to. What's the one? Uh, Escape from New York. Escape from New York. That's you also gotta watch The Thing. I've seen The Thing. You showed me The Thing. Didn't you fall asleep though? No, I watched The Thing. I watched the whole. Did you like it? Yeah, it was pretty funny. I liked it a lot. Well, not like funny, but like I liked it. Yeah, it's not a funny movie by any the, the, means. When you just like vape, he, that's like the flamethrower movie, right? That you showed me, right? Yeah, and like they're all like strapped down in the chair. I was, yeah, baked that movie. Yeah, that was it was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good, I, I was, yeah, that kind of like blew my, my mind like a little bit. All right, we'll, we'll watch it normal next time. <laughs> I think I have to. Yeah. yeah, to get like a full grasp on like what actually transpired throughout the entire thing. But back to Balls of Fury. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Balls of Fury. There is one scene where um, I forget what the guy's name is, but he's like the classic, like deep voice, like dumb guy, and he's like, everything is like, 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 everything's coming to an end. He like sounds the, like this. Yeah, he sounds like this guy. He's actually isn't it the same guy from Third Rock from the Sun? Yes. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, I'm gonna go save the panda, and then he oh, just Cedric like runs Bader? away. What's up, Diedrich Bader? I guess so. Is that? His oh wait, name? wait, no, no, no. Uh, or you know he's from the uh, Drew Carey show. Yeah, that's Diedrich Bader. Yeah. He has like a new sitcom out like right now. I think it's on. I, I want to say ABC. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure he's um, whatever current Batman animated show is on. He's Batman. Really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But he goes, I'm gonna save the panda. Panda's dead, and then just like runs away. I think that's like one of the funniest things. And then like, <laughs> there's like the the prostitution ring part. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, he's the middle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know what you're talking about. And he, that- like, Oh. I don't think that movie's very funny, but that scene is really good. Yeah, I I like that movie. I like Balls of Fury a lot. Um, ping pong. Or ping as, pong. Or as the I Chinese won. call it. Uh, ping pong. It's a terrible movie by every sense of the word, every sense of the mean, but uh, Olympus Has Fallen. 
Yeah. It, it kept me entertained. It's a, I, well, I'll always everything about it movie. sucks, but it's just, I don't know, it unapologetically bad, and it's just like, just kicked ass. like Gerard Butler. All he did was just kill guys, and it made no sense how he was doing it against you know an entire country. But yeah, it just I don't know. I have a Gerard Anything. Butler movie also on my list. That's not that, but it's like the similar like uh, Law Abiding Citizen. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I I did like that one. Yeah, it's it's so stupid, like and so just out there. It is like inconceivable, but I actually like I hate Law Abiding Citizen. <laughs> like it's <laughs> so fucking bad. Like. That's a movie that, like, pissed me off. Uh, yeah, well, I really liked it, dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Like, it... Uh, I, I guess just, like... Safe just, zone. I guess, like, just Gerard Butler kicking ass. I don't know. I Do I think it's, like, a great movie? No, but I do... Overall, I came away with, like, a positive feeling, I guess, kind of towards it. I was like, yeah, at least he kicked some ass. That's basically it. I, I guess so. Like I, Jamie Foxx, like kind of pissed me off, like in that movie. Yeah, like, there's just like certain things, like that just aren't good, honestly. The actions, like what decent. It's just a guilty pleasure. Yeah. It is. It really is. It's just like I know this movie's a pile of shit, but I'm gonna enjoy it. Pretty, pretty much, yeah. yeah. Have you guys ever seen Hot Tub Time Machine two? Not no. two, just one. I've only seen the first one. <laughs> I watched the second one, and it's. Did you guys like the first one? Yeah, I do. I, I, I the enjoyed, first one's great. The first one is the a great. The movie. second one is pretty much like a retread, except they go into the future, and it's stupid, like bad. But the cast is because they replaced um, John Cusack with Adam Scott, and I love Adam Scott. Mm-hmm. And it's just like that. I think that cast is great, and it's just it's it's a bad movie, like like really bad compared to the original one. Mm-hmm. But it's so stupid. It's so funny, like. I had never seen it, so I can't judge on it. I'd I have d- to see it. I yeah. just I know one of the funniest uh, one of the funniest at film sex scenes I ever saw was in Hot Tub Time Machine with Craig Robinson. Oh, and he's crying in the bathroom. Oh, he's crying in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, but it's so funny too. It's like, dude, if a girl like that is having sex with you, the last thing you're gonna do is cry about it. But like he like, but in some weird fashion, because he went back in time, but he's currently married, he's crying because he's technically cheating on his wife, and he's like so upset about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just so great, dude. Like that when he when he calls on the phone and he's like, "You cheated on me!" And like he's like yelling at like his wife just back then, but she's like eight or nine years old. Yeah, and like the dad eventually picks up and he's like, "Jerry, get off the phone, man!" Like I'm talking to my wife, and he's like, <laughs> "He's like, who are you?" <laughs> like that was great. I. All right, uh, Pat, do you have a movie? Is um, that a, a, a Top Machine too? I mean, not a specific one, but a general category. Shitty horror movies, like especially I like have a few, <laughs> especially like um, ghost ones or possession ones or Ouija movies, Ouija board movies, because they're the dumbest fucking thing in the world, and everyone in it like deserves to get killed at the end. But just for being stupid, just for being stupid. But I don't know. It's just like. They keep me entertained, even though I know they're horrible. And, like, you could read the titles. It's like Ouija, um, Destruction of Something. And I'm just like, oh, this this sounds horrible. Let me watch it. And a lot of them are on Netflix because Netflix, most of the horror, if not all of the horror movies on there are pretty fucking shitty. Yeah. Their, their selection's been dwindling, but, oh, my God, they're just some of, the, like, the worst things I've ever seen. Actually, like, a movie that I have as far as when it comes to, like, a guilty pleasure horror movie is The Cell with Jennifer Lopez. With Jennifer Lopez. Mm-hmm. That movie sucks. Um, it's not a good movie. It's how I kind of how I feel about X Men Three. Is like I know most people don't like that movie, um, and a lot of people hate it. But I really liked it. I, 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 the only problem I had with that movie was Vince Vaughn. He's just the stereotypical like, you know, like cops mo- like you know like addicted to this case and he's smoking a cigarette like like he's a like loose cannon cop on the edge. Yeah. But he care, but he cares about the right thing. Like, like it's just like he's like that cop. Like it's just so cliche and so annoying. By the book or is he? Yeah, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> he's just such a fucking idiot in that movie. But I will say, like, I Jennifer Lopez like isn't that bad in that movie. And like, I kind of like the idea behind it more. Uh-huh. I can watch it, and I think when they go inside, like the like the the killer's mind, it was kind of cool. Even though it's like strangely weird doesn't really make a lot of it doesn't make sense <laughs> but again that's just a movie that i like that i i know kind of sucks tremors 
Up top. Yeah. Yeah. Great choice. I Tremors is definitely a guilty pleasure because when you look at Tremors, it's really not a good movie at all. But but I love the concept of like creepy monsters from the ground. I don't know. I it, you it, Tremors kind of falls into those movies where it's a, a bad move. I think what makes a bad movie great is how committed the actors are to it. Like yeah. f- for the most part, you know, like there's Troll Two, which nothing about that movie is good, which is why it's great. But like Kevin Bacon is like he acts really well in that movie. Yeah, for no, a movie about giant underground worms. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just but the movie is so stupid, but it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I that's like a movie I like first watched when I was like a small kid, and like I think that's why it like still stuck with me as like a movie like I like because like I watch it now and I'm like this is dumb like clearly, yeah. but like. Yeah, I I am a big fan of Tremors. I mean, like, I know you like Tremors three the best, but no, 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 you like Tremors four the best. Oh, uh, who told you? <laughs> <laughs> I, Tremors is definitely like up there, like on my list. And then, um, if I had to pick another one, the Power Rangers movie. Um, <laughs> oh, dude, love it. Yeah. Uh, all right, Ivan Ooze. You don't like Ivan Ooze. That's a movie that I, that I, of course, I loved it as a kid, but like, I can't watch it. Anymore. I, I watched it like I tried to watch it not, not too long, long ago. What did you think? Oh, it was horrible, but I loved it. Yeah, you loved it because like, I, I was just like, I it's just so so fucking bad. But that's that's how the show was. No, but the okay. iteration of the show, like it was the worst, like cheesiest, crappiest writing and dialogue, but like it was entertaining. I mean, especially because the fight scenes in the original show were awesome. Well, this, the fight scenes were were, were Japanese. Yeah, and that's they why just, they were and good. That's why they were good. And like they were, the, the original, like the original show, like you can ignore like the terrible acting and dialogue between the characters because like you can like enjoy you can enjoy these like landscapes that they built like miniatures. And I'm a huge kaiju fan, like you guys know that. So mm-hmm. like I was like as a kid, I was always like, oh my god, like that monster is so cool. Like and like the fight scenes and the music was great. Like da 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 da. Oh, it was my favorite show. Yeah, the theme up. song was amazing. Yeah, so like there was things to appreciate about the original show that like oh, transcended oh, it. Oh, yeah, and like the movie did none of that. <laughs> like I and again, I loved the movie as a kid, but you can't watch it now. The oh, CG my god. is terrible. It honestly like. I had like this like I was like talking to myself like in my head like while I was watching it. I'm like man what were you thinking growing up like this is what you liked yeah and like you watch it and like like watching the parents like as zombies in that when they get like addicted to the ooze or like whatever or they smell the ooze mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about and, oh like, yeah there was and they're just like basically like a labor camp you know what I mean yeah it's like doesn't really make any sense it's just like what and then all then there's like a classic like Van Halen song like at the end. And you yeah, have, like, you know what I'm saying. And well, the movie yeah, starts off with them skydiving one. on like snowboards out of nowhere, which is legitimately cool. No, it is cool, but it's just like that's so Power Rangers, okay. though. Yeah, just to show like they were extreme, they yeah, are. but ninjas. In the movie, also too, like I, they, you know, like they, when they got, they were getting like a wide release, mm-hmm. and like the, and like they knew they were the, the the show was such a hit at the time that like the movie was not gonna fail by any means. So no. Like in the in the in the movie, like the Black Ranger was a black guy and the Yellow Ranger was an Asian girl, which like obviously like in two in two thousand seventeen, like people have to always point that out. And in the Power Rangers movie, they like changed it up a little bit, you know. Yeah. So and they also they like they changed some of the main cast from the original show. They did. They, yeah, they did. I, I remember being pissed off as a kid. I was like, "Where's what's his face?" And like, "Where's her, where where is she?" Like, mm-hmm. but they kept Tommy, who was uh, like, I was, but "Tommy's the coolest one." Tommy is the coolest ranger. He start. He's kind of like the Vegeta of the Power Rangers. Like, he started off as a bad guy and like becomes yeah. like the leader. Like, even though Vegeta's <clears throat> never the leader, but you know, yeah. yeah. But I, Tommy was awesome. Like, what was it, Tommy? Like, he played like that, like ocarina, like looking thing. It was and- a. It was a blade, but it called it. It called it called forth to his Megazord. And it was like. Yeah. That, and it rose like out of the water, right? Yeah, yeah. dude, that Zord was sick. That Especially was... when they when they took off like um, the T Rex and then combined him with the Megazord. Yes, that was a definitely a badass version. But then he became the White Ranger, mm-hmm. and he got the White Lion Zord, a White Tiger Zord, and that was fucking dope. That yeah, that was cool. 
Um, I still, but I like his. I like the green one better, and the original Megazord more, just because it's a dinosaur. Like <laughs> true. Like that's a really. But like, I can see why most people like the uh, the white lion uh, Zord more. But I uh, did you ever play the game for Super Nintendo? No. no. All right. Well, though there was there was a couple. There was one that took place before the movie, which. And then there was one that was during the movie, and then one that was just like Megazord battles fighting giant monsters. Yeah, that was, was that sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah, all three of them yeah. were sick. But then when you put in a cheat code and you could just have full power white Power Ranger, you kicked ass the entire time. Yeah, there's something like, dude, like Japanese entertainment is is like the it's so like off the rails sometimes, and that's what's so awesome is that like, dude, think of how many shows in Japan, like have giant robots fighting each other and then combine those giant robots to make it a, a bigger giant robot. And mm-hmm. like, but the, like the, like the metaphor is like teamwork and like, it's so like to teach kids like to work together, but like working together gives you this giant robot that can win the day. Like, I don't know. It's just so like out there. Like, it, like that was Voltron pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Voltron is like super similar. Yeah. yeah. Voltron's sick though. All right. Uh, going back to the topic at hand though. Um, I guess, all right. I think you guys would like this movie too, but it's not a good movie by any means. Is Kung Pao Into the Fist? I really like yeah. Kung Pao Into the Fist. I love that movie. <laughs> uh, and the chick with one boob. <laughs> and <laughs> I forgot about. Remember that. the part where uh, he like uh, the, the, the I forget the enemy's name, but like they constantly hit him with sticks, and he just stands there and he's like, mm, I can take it, and like the. Uh, but he's like, all right, now do it to me. And, like, they do it to him. And he's like, don't stop until I give the signal. But they knock him out before he gives the signal. So they literally <laughs> just beat him until, like, the next day, like, while he's on the ground. <laughs> I I haven't seen that movie in a really long time. I actually only saw it one time, but I did enjoy that movie a lot. Like, that would, I guess, be a guilty pleasure for me, too. Yeah. I remember the cow scene, like, vividly. Yeah. And the mark of the hero is a face on his tongue. And whenever he like sticks out his tongue, it's just this like little like, creature. <laughs> I, I gotta think of a good. One. All right, I got a good one. Um, Shanghai Nights with Jackie Chan and Owen Wilson. I've never seen it. I like Shanghai Noon. Okay, well, Shanghai Nights is probably like the worst version of like Shanghai Noon. Um, Shanghai Nights like takes place in like Great Britain. Um, it's just classic like Jackie Chan and. Owen Wilson just has like so many like wow like moments in it, and um, I know honestly a lot of my guilty pleasures are like they just stem from like movies I liked when I was a kid. Yeah. To be honest with you, and like that I remember like randomly my parents bought me that movie and just like brought home. They're like Jackie Chan because I used to watch Jackie Chan the animated series. Yeah. And great like, animated show. Uh, amazing, and uh, I was like, this is awesome, and like that's kind of how that's like the first movie I ever saw Owen Wilson in. Yeah. I'm again. I'm a big Jackie Chan fan, so like I've uh, Shanghai Nights. I I don't think I ever really finished it ever. Yeah, but Shanghai knew I like and like Jackie Chan movies are just awesome. His fight choreography is uh, amazing. It's second to none. He deserved the honorary award this year at the Academy. Um, Speaking of Jackie Chan and guilty pleasure movies, Rush Hour Three. Yeah, first Rush Hour is excellent. I like the second one the best. Second one is really good. But three is, I mean, it's easily the worst of the three. But, dude, I still think it's great. Yeah, it's kind of just like I don't know. It's like it's like a total like the gang's all here movie. Like, and it's just like uh, maybe it wasn't sh- sh- maybe you guys should have just stopped. You know? Yeah, but it was still funny. And yeah. Jackie Chan, of course, kicked a lot of ass. Of course he does. I don't know. It's I like it. I own all three of them. You know? I like all the Rush Hour movies. Yeah, I like them too. I just. It's it's hard like it's hard to have a guilty pleasure as a sequel because it's hard to not think of how good the first and second one were, especially the second one. Mm-hmm. That second movie is is like a it's the action's great in it too, like the first one, but it's better in the second one, like hands down. And I feel like it's just as funny, like the opening scene where he's like, like where he like hits Jackie Chan, and he's like, "You all look alike." <laughs> it's so like blatantly racist, but it's so funny. Like it, it is funny. Yeah. You understand the words that come out of my mouth? Yeah. Nobody understands the words that come out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's like, the, when I think of like Chris Tucker, that's like what I think of is like Rush Hour. I think of Friday. 
like oh dude friday's a great movie yeah that's not even a guilty pleasure no, at no, all but yeah i think of that too you just got knocked the fuck out oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm going back to rehab shit you think i'm going back to rehab <laughs> Smokey, you smoke weed every day. <laughs> Here's a good one. Uh, Pokemon 2000. Yeah. You know, I uh, Pokemon 2000 might be, like, my... Actually, like... I don't know if it's my favorite. It's definitely, like, my favorite legendary Pokemon. You, you wouldn't consider the first one more of a guilty pleasure? Because uh, I think out of, like, the first three Pokemon movies, the first movie is the... Is the worst one. You think the first one's the worst one? Yeah, I mean, I Shut like it because it's mouth. Pokemon. But, like, obviously, like I can watch it all the time, but like they get things, they get Pokemon wrong in that movie, like two or three times. Like I specifically remember, like one of the characters saying Pidgeot when it's a Pidgeot trigger. Yeah, and, yeah, it was clearly a Pidgeot. Yeah, and like there's a couple other things too they mess up. Where we're like, what? You know, um, you're the Gyarados kid. <laughs> no, he repeat that line. <laughs> The storm was no problem. I just rode on Gyarados's back. Yeah. <laughs> and, then he's like, and he's like, Gyarados! And like, when he gets, like, rocked by Mewtwo. Dude, I mean, I will... I think, actually, like, not counting the other... I've seen, like, some of the other movies after Pokemon 3. Um, I saw the Celebi one. That one was all right. It was okay. Yeah, but, but I think Pokemon 3 is the best Pokemon movie out of all of them. Yeah. I guess in terms of, like, plot, yeah. Like I do, like I actually care about some of the characters. Um, it's uh, it, even though it has the least amount of fight scenes, uh, the fight scenes actually like make sense and it actually like, continues the story. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I just I like Pokemon. Like Pokemon Three. Like I I guess that's a guilty pleasure too because, like, who would like that fucking movie besides like people like us or like people who kids who like Pokemon? Yeah, exactly. I would I, say the first. I, my only argument is I think the first one's more of a guilty pleasure than all of them. Yeah, like, it's not really that good. <laughs> and dude, there's so many like corny lines in it too. Like Ash's like march out like when he like gets resurrected. He's like, "You can't do this. I won't let you." And like all the Pokemon like march with him like against Mewtwo. Yeah, it's like, oof. It's like you, hard to you, watch. You watch that now, and you like really think to yourself, "What were you thinking?" It also kind of is weird. Like Meowth has that one line where he like, where he's like, you know, we all just like got along, and like everyone was like it's super deep. Yeah, honestly. but at the same time, like, dude, the show is about like capturing animals against their will and making them fight <laughs> and making them fight. Yeah, and, like, yeah, it's just like it doesn't make any sense. And like, if you go like on like Rotten Tomatoes and like. Like some of the critics like point that out. They're like, like people who never watched the show are like, that doesn't make any sense. Isn't this about fucking like capturing like Pokemon and making them fight? And like, I noticed I when we, that night when we did the trilogy movie, like night one yeah. night at my in my basement, we all like sat down and just watched the first three Pokemon movies. And like, it was a great night. I th- I like that's I thought that when Meowth said that line, and then but like then Tino like fell in love with that line. Like I didn't want to say anything. He was like, "Wow, that was super deep, guys." Yeah, and he like tweeted it. And everyone's yeah. like, "Oh my god, you know, you're a prophet. Let me have sex with you." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. But like from Denise's perspective, like my perspective, like Pokemon two thousand, I, I I like that one a lot just basically because I always like the legendary birds and like the yeah. heavy emphasis on them I thought was like the coolest part. And plus Lugia is the coolest thing. Ever. Oh yeah, Lugia is cool. Lugia is the coolest thing. I love the whole concept of the song and like everything and like them aligning and like the fire. Uh like lightning and ice, like island, like all. Mm-hmm. I thought I just really like the concept of it yeah. more. They definitely did. They definitely did their homework a little better with the second movie. Yeah, and plus I really liked Slowking in that one too. Yeah, he's actually he's an he's like an actual character. Do you have a movie, Pat? Uh, I don't know if I really have any more that could be named. Did we talk about Con Air, right? No, we didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> we talked about Con Air before we started recording. Yeah. Okay. Con Air is the ultimate guilty pleasure because it's a movie that everyone likes, but you really shouldn't like. Talk in Nick Cage's accent while you're describing this movie. <laughs> I just want to get back to my daughter. Is it pretty much his motivation throughout the whole movie. And, like, the movie just has, like, the most cliche characters I've ever seen. Like Dave Chappelle? Like Dave Chappelle. Uh, <laughs> Cyrus the Virus, who... Uh, 
All right. The, one thing about Con Air, though, is it has a legitimately scary character, and it's uh, Steve Buscemi's character. I forget his name. Yeah. But he's, like, legitimately scary in that movie. I will give it that. John Cusack is just John Cusack. Mm. Uh, Nick Cage is fucking incredible. He has that hair. Like <laughs> He does have long hair. Yeah, it's one of those movies where, like, explosions, like, just don't matter if as long as you're not in the fire mm-hmm. like which is totally like not true uh like you can't be next to a you just can't be right by an explosion and have it just like i i don't know like there's something about people walking away from explosions that's just always bothered me uh why would you ever walk away from an explosion i'm sprinting out of there if something's gonna explode yeah people don't because really, cool guys don't look at explosions. yeah but the, like like <laughs> I, I think do people forget that like even though you're, if you're not in like engulfed in the napalm or the or the flames of the explosion like it's still really fucking hot and you're still gonna get burnt like yeah yeah like it's not like dude, like it's but, like just because this just because the sun doesn't directly hit you doesn't mean it's not hot outside exactly you know like it uh, whatever yeah, but like again, like but I love this movie. Like I love it. It's so good. It's any other Nick Cage movies you like love that are guilty pleasures? Oh, dude, Face Off with John Travolta and oh, Nicolas geez. Cage. That's a great movie. <laughs> great movie. Face Off, and like <laughs> it's it, it's a John Woo film. Like it's got like the white doves. Like you know when the, mm-hmm. like like the slow walking with the gun. You know and like the trench coat flapping in the wind. Like, it's got like all those the. The like the over like the over dedicated like uh cop slash FBI agent that just like wants to get the case finished. Yeah. You know. He's like overly obsessed. What about the Wicker Man? Oh, I hate that movie. I really hate that movie. Um I like most people that talk to me think they're like, dude, you probably like the Wicker Man because it's so bad it's good, right? Because like and honestly, if you've ever seen the the original from the sixties, it's a really intelligent horror film. Mm-hmm. And that <sighs> It, that movie just like really shits on it. That might be like the worst movie I've ever seen. Honestly, like it's the one bees, of them. not the bees. The bees. Pat, you know who really likes the Wicker Man is Pat. No, the Nicolas Cage one. Like <laughs> no. he was, he thought it was scary. <laughs> no, <laughs> if anybody is scared of that movie, then they are just like, I don't know, they're like worse than Joe Really, I guess. Damn, worse than Joe. Really. <laughs> I mean, I feel like like the, all the Leprechaun movies are guilty pleasures. All of them. No, I refuse to watch those. Except, I can't uh, watch that. There's one in the, uh, Leprechaun in the Hood. That one's great. All right, that one I'll watch. You won't watch the first one? No. Why? It sucks. It's like not worth my time. I think. I mean, I like not them. that my time is valuable. I like but them because they waste suck. It. But yeah, I don't. It's not for me. They're not the ones, except for in the Hood, that are like so bad it's good that I'll that it'll be worth watching for me. There's the Flintstones live action movie. That's a guilty pleasure. Wait. Uh, which one? The one with John Goodman or no? Yeah, the Rock one with Davis? John Goodman. Yeah, the other yeah, one. Yeah. The other one. No, no, no I was no. gonna say the one with John Goodman is is perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah, I like that one, even though it's not like again, it's kind of not what the Flintstones are. Uh, one movie that I think both of you've probably seen, and I it's one of those. I, it's a guilty pleasure, but I don't like it because it's a good movie. I like it for its flaws. Mm-hmm. Is Jurassic Park three? I love Jurassic Park three. Dude, like it's, the dream scene is some of the funniest shit I ever saw in my life, <laughs> with the, with the Velociraptor saying "Alan, Alan, Alan." <laughs> Dude, I love the Velociraptor like yell when it's just like, oh, oh. <laughs> it's just like yo, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that's just how we finish the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's that stupid lucky backpack. Isn't that what it is? He's like, it's my lucky strap. Yeah. It's like, it's like a pterodactyl like attacking him. It's yeah, just like, and it's like there's just it's... eggs in there. Like, dude, fuck that guy. Like, Why would you just take dinosaur I eggs? I would have killed him. Like, that it, guy you needs to get off. Dude. Yeah, like the fact that if if I was like, if, I, if we went on like a random trip with all of our friends and like we found out that fucking like Robbie had Velociraptor or had, had Velociraptor eggs in his backpack. We have the right to kill him. I would kill him. I would straight up be like, you, and I would look at him legitimately. I'd be like, dude, you don't understand. Like, you endangered all of our lives by doing that. Like, you're gone. You know? You're voted off the island. Yeah. You know what? Like, it's, it's not that good of a movie, uh, but it has a scene that I really like in it. Uh, did you ever see Defiance with Daniel Craig? Yeah, I have. You know, and it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's an all right movie. It's got its flaws. Like, he's like, you know, it's, it's got like the typical scenes. Like, he's on the white horse and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, um, but there's a there's a scene where like you know like when they're with the in like the um 
in like the little uh, hideout that they have, like amongst all the like amongst. Uh, I I, I, I want to call it a neighborhood because it's kind of like looks like that. But uh, the hideout that they're in, and he's like the leader, and the guy's like time for a new leadership, and that's all he says. And dude, Daniel Craig just shoots him like, and but like it's so it's it's it it makes complete sense. Like there wasn't a lot of exposition, but like he is the leader, and someone telling you time for new leadership he's threatening your life like and like they, they do like there was no like what are you gonna do you know yeah he just right for the yeah jungler. and it just it kind of it, it that's what always kind of made sense uh wait what movie were we talking about before defiance because i had a point jurassic park jurassic 3. park 3 so like it, it, it like it, going back to jurassic park 3 it's like dude like you're putting everyone's lives in danger like you gotta go <laughs> i'm sorry exactly. like there's like we came here to save a child and like we want to make sure the parents survive so like ah yeah that guy sucks but again that's kind of why like i find the movie enjoyable because it's so stupid i i think the dinosaur they like introduced at the end like the the spinosaurus or whatever how it's like a water hybrid like i thought was like pretty cool yeah i like that as like the big monster dinosaur at the end yeah it it beats the t-rex which is annoying but it's it's also the shortest one it's like an hour and a half Oh really? Yeah, it's like that movie, like literally, like is like we're gonna make Jurassic Park and we're just gonna give you what you want, and I guess like Sam Neill's gonna just say some things, you know, <laughs> and he's kind of a dick in that movie too. He like wants no part of it. Like- and also, like remember at the end of Jurassic Park of the the, of the original Jurassic Park, he like kind of gets over like his like uh, his like reservations about having kids, and he kind of like grows accustomed to like, you know being like some sort of like some someone to look up to uh, when it comes to children and it kind of like gives you a sense of hope between him and his girlfriend or wife or whatever she was that they were gonna like not only grow together but grow together like with a family Mm -hmm. and then like jurassic park 3 is like nope fuck off like she married someone else had kids with someone else like and you're like what that's not what i was rooting for like it's kind of a slap in the balls yeah yeah but i mean it's still like it's just so it's stupid like it's not a good movie by any means yeah and like the wife just she just constantly like has heavy breathing throughout that movie and she's like has a megaphone and is you know I remember the one scene where like the velociraptors like really just like come in hot and they like murk that bald guy. You know what I'm talking about? That was about? a great scene. They like yeah. rip his head off. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of just like violent raptor like kills like in that one. How do you guys feel about Jason X? That movie fucking blows, dude. <laughs> Never seen it. I'm not really a horror movie guy like you guys. It's not even scary though, because it's just Jason in space in the future, and it's horrible. All right, you know what? I'm gonna defend that movie. I'm a huge Friday the Thirteenth fan. I've seen all of them. I, uh, I, they're great movies, even though they're not really that great. Jason X is like, there's no way they made that movie knowing it was gonna be good. It's literally like Jason in space. They have like an android dr- girl that fights them. You, know, it's... <laughs> you never know, man. People might think like, "Oh, this is gonna, this is gonna be groundbreaking. Yeah. This is gonna be amazing," and then it was a hot pile of shit. Yeah, I mean, dude, like, the, like uh, I think it's the worst of any of the Friday Thirteenth movies I've ever seen. Really? Absolutely. I mean, Uber Jason was pretty cool. Like and there, there was nothing like the other ones I thought were actually entertaining, even the really bad ones, you know, the longer they went on. Yeah. Um, like Jason Goes to Manhattan. Oh, great. Horrible. Even though, like, dude, it but starts like, off in Camp Crystal Lake. Yeah. And what is a lake, Nick? What's a lake? A lake's just basically like a body of water that really has, like, no. It's landlocked. Ins or outs. Yeah. And what the great thing about Friday the 13th, part eight, is that the boat that is, like, the cruise ship for the, for the, for the, kids that are graduating high school mm-hmm. starts off in camp crystal lake and like the next shot it's in like the harbor of like out into the ocean so like how did the boat it's not physically possible it's not physically possible it but, flew but like and like if you, really if you watch boat, you the, no idea. if you watch the six and a half hour documentary on shutter like i did and i watched it straight and i watched it the whole thing the writers knew that from the get-go and they're like we really wanted to go to New York, and there's no other plausible way for him to be there. So, like, we just kind of did snuck it. snuck on a plane. Yeah, it was, yeah, it would, that would have been Jason on a plane. Uh, that would have been stupid. Well, Jason on a, <laughs> oh, wait, yeah. really? That yeah. would have been stupid. <laughs> like, it, Jason on a plane. <laughs> New movie. Yeah. Yeah, actually, if you really think about it, a lot of the Friday the 13th are guilty pleasures. 
It's like no, I'll I'll watch them. I just I think Jason X is horrible. I like Jason X. I, I think like I re- I like I definitely like the original Friday the Thirteenth. I I would say I like the first three. The other ones are just get like bad, but I'll watch them. And then I like the remake that came out like eight years ago or whatever it was. Oh, that the remake, or, dude. Long a lot of people shit on that movie, for, like especially like Friday the Thirteenth fans. But I actually like liked it. Like, I liked it too. It's not it's not perfect, and it's not it's not everything that I wanted. But no. like you know what, man? It's it better could, than the Halloween remake. Oh yeah, it it kept the spirit of the series. Yes, like to a T. But if we're talking guilty pleasure related to Jason, other than the original Friday the Thirteenth. Um, Jason vs. Freddy. Or Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah, or, that's a definitely a guilty pleasure. That movie is so bad, but it's just like, it, I enjoy it because you're seeing these two icons yeah. going against each other and competing against each other. Yeah, I, I, I like that movie too. I have, like, it's definitely, I would consider it a guilty pleasure. I have my reservations about it. The fact that, you know, Elm Street and Crystal Lake are just right by each other is like, Kind of weird, you know. They just so happen. Well, it's like Gotham and Metropolis being so close to each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. And but but Batman for Superman is a legit movie. No, I'm just saying, like, like the the yeah, it doesn't make sense location wise, but it just served the plot. Yeah, to work like that. But and yeah, that girl's a babe in the, in the movie too, even though she just is like so wide eyed the whole time. Uh, if Freddy vs. Jason, I like Freddy vs. Jason, even though like really. Like Jason would destroy Freddy outside of the Dream World, because Heather uh, like Heather Landingcap in the first Nightmare on Elm Street like like is able to fight off Freddy, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. you know, she's like a, she's a teenage girl in that movie, but like then somehow like Freddy like outside the Dream World can like go toe to toe with Jason like no and Jason's like a behemoth Jason is, yeah Jason literally as out of all the slashers Jason is probably physically the strongest out of all of them. Yeah, he's he's scary. Yeah. Did we talk about Starship Troopers? No. Well, let's do it. Did you ever see Starship Troopers? I love Starship Troopers. I had the action figures as a kid. Yeah. Dude, like that was All right. So, you know like when you're a kid and like you like you didn't know movies had nude scenes, you're like, "Whoa." That right? was like one of the like, That was the first. That was one of the first I can ever remember seeing. My mom was like super pissed that like I watched that movie. Yeah. I remember that like being like a thing in my house. Yeah, that was uh, my mine was Jer- I think it was was it Jerry Maguire, like that like that I remember my mom being like like I remember her being like really pissed that like someone showed me like a movie. Yeah, I, I Starship Troopers was one because like my I don't think my parents anticipated like how intense it was going to be because it started out like I just bought the action figures. Yeah, I thought they were really cool and I was like, oh yeah, this movie's gonna be great. And then people are getting like ripped in half and like stuff by like these like violent like aliens and like yeah, there's nude scenes like you said and. My, I remember, like, my parents, like, originally, like, turned it off. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, why did you turn off the movie? Like, this, like, whole thing. And I had to watch it, like, two years later, like, with, like, a friend or, like, something. Yeah. You know what's great about the 90s is that they made action figures for R-rated movies. Yeah. Like, yeah. Starship Troopers. Yeah. I remember the scene with the tattoo. I remember that one. And he's like, oh, look at that. Yeah. Uh, dude, that guy is amazing. That The main actor. Um, I forget what his name is. I'm gonna look it up because it's it's too it, it's too. It's just it, it's just a classic. Like honestly, like, I don't want to say like a classic, but like it's like quintessential like bad like '90s like sci-fi. Like I guess you would say. Yeah, it's just great. And there's the guy that looks like Rob Lowe, but like isn't Rob Lowe. Like, <laughs> and Neil Patrick Harris is in it. Yeah, he, he is. He is in that. Oh my god, I forgot about that. It's Colonel Carl Jenkins. Carl Jenkins. Colonel Carl Jenkins. <laughs> that's like a, that's that's like the last name I would pick for. Is it Rico? Name. Is that his name? Johnny Rico. Johnny Rico. Yeah, Casper Van Van Dyne, I think is the actor's name. But yeah, yeah. and uh, on the like the listing, he he went from Private Corporal Sergeant Lieutenant John Johnny Rico. <laughs> <laughs> a lieutenant in like in like an hour and a half. <laughs> Yeah, but they're getting attacked by like crazy creatures, man. Yeah. Desperate times calls for desperate measures. <laughs> I feel like that's like a big budget sci-fi channel original movie. 
Mm-hmm. And that's why it's so enjoyable. Enjoyable, probably, yeah. Because like I, that was on TV like not too long ago, and like I like sat there and watched parts of it, and I was like, "What was I, I did like the same thing?" I'm like, "This is like something I enjoyed." <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "God damn, man!" What was I like, thinking? I mean, well, this movie was like actually did well critically, but I don't. I, I'm kind of asking, like, would it fit into a guilty pleasure or a specific rim? I never seen it. I've never seen it on a lot of the websites I saw. Like they have it like listed as like a guilty pleasure, though. Yeah, it's, to me, like that's well, it, it I, shouldn't be guilty for you because you love kaiju movies. Yeah, I guess I wouldn't really fall into a guilty pleasure, and a lot of people did like that movie that I remember. But I remember hearing positive things about it, though. Like people actually were like surprised that they liked it. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. It's a very it's a loving send off. It's like a it's like a it's a loving send off to like those type of movies. Like a lot of people complain about the scientist characters in Pacific Rim, how they were like poorly written. Mm-hmm. But if you, I've seen almost every Japanese kaiju movie. Like I've, I've, like if you name it, I've probably seen it. If not, I probably will have seen it since I, since I haven't seen it yet. Like that's how I'm into those movies. I am. All the scientist characters in those movies are the fucking same. They're all like kooky, crazy, like weirdly obsessed, and just like, and they're poorly written. They're all yeah. poorly written. Like, and that is. Uh, Charlie Day and what's his face as the two scientists in in Pacific Rim. They are like on purpose, kind of poorly written, mm-hmm. on purpose annoying, on purposely overly obsessed, and like right. they play off each other that way. And it, when I was watching the movie, I was like, "Oh my god! Like this is perfect! Like that's literally how they are in those movies." Like and, and Guillermo del Toro got it down to a T. And like I would go on Twitter and like. Uh, like and even on like IGN, like the critics and like uh, and like even like it, it, like normal people that were talking about it, like, dude, those scientists were annoying. They were like not even good. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like they were meant to be that way. Right. You have to like really know those movies to understand like where they're coming from. Yeah. You know? I don't know. That's how I feel. That's just something I want to say on the air. <clears throat> I I want to check out Pacific Rim. It's awesome. It's an awesome movie. Is Charlie Hunnam in that? Yeah. He is in that, right? He's good too. Yeah, I would have to. I'm definitely gonna have to check that out. Yeah. Um, do you have any other guilty pleasure movies, guys? Um, let's see. Uh, the la- the only other one I can think of, and I know it's like a really bad movie, but I watched both of them so far, and they're making a third one, and they're so stupid. But uh, now you see me, one and two. Never seen them. I've never seen them. Do you know what it's about? It's like yeah. Jesse Eisenberg leads the group of you know magicians. They're so ah. fucking stupid, but like I don't know what it is. They're just entertaining. Because, like, yeah. Jesse Eisenberg's in it, but Woody Harrelson's great in it. Uh, Mark Ruffalo's in it. Uh, Dave Franco's really good in it. But, like, the plot is just bonkers. And, like, doesn't make any sense, and then just has too many conveniences. But it's, it's, I don't know, it was entertaining because it's just like, all right, I'm going to sit here, have a snack, watch this movie. Not going to be blown away, but whatever. I'm going to kill, like, 90 yeah. minutes. It's fine. Like that's what it's good for. A lot of like, that's a very I, from what I hear about the now you see me movies is they're very extreme. Like some people like are like, dude, they're amazing, mm-hmm. and like some people are like, they kind of suck. <laughs> they do suck, but the actors in it take them take it seriously, so they're committed yeah. to it. But and that's what makes but, it good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm able to forget. I'm able to forgive like the writing issues, <laughs> pacing issues, and some bad effects here and there. But I don't know. I think the only reason I gave it a shot is because I like a majority of the main cast. I love Woody Harrelson. I love Woody Harrelson. Same. He was great in No Country for Old Men. Yeah. Did you ever see No Country for Old Men? Yeah. Oh, my God. He is in that movie. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah he is in that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You remember? Uh, I just had, like, a total blank for, like, a yeah. second. I don't know why. Like, like, he's like, do you know how, like, do you know how crazy you are? And, like, and, the, and he's just like, I don't understand what, what, what do you mean by that question. He's like, He's like, and he like he exp- like because he knows he's gonna die. Like, mm-hmm. oh, that was, that's actually my favorite scene in the movie. Yeah, I just had like a total like brain. You remember right him there. in that movie? Mm-hmm. What a fucking ah, great movie. That's like one of my favorite villains I think I've like ever seen. Yeah, he it's uh, he's played by Javier Bardem. Uh, I forget the I forget the character's name in the movie though, but he's so fucking scary. It's like Anton or like something like that or like some. Uh, you would remember. No, I, I think it's like Anton, or I'll find, right, let's just look it up. Yeah. I think it's Anton. All right, it's well, with an if we're talking about a legitimately good movie, I think it's time to probably end the podcast. Um, when Cat, about Pat, when you when you see the name, just say it. 
Um, but yeah, so, so those are our, a lot of our guilty pleasure movies. Anton. Uh, Anton. Anton Sugar. I knew it. I think. Yep. Uh, let us know in the comments below um, what what some of your guilty pleasure movies are. What's a movie that you love, but you know you would be embarrassed to tell your friends or you know or girlfriend or significant other or you know boyfriend, whoever you role, um, you know that you that you like the movie. Uh, also, I, I don't actually. I, I forgot what I was going to say. So just edit that part out. <laughs> We'll just go. Did, right. it, did any of the movies we say actually suck? Do you hate them? Do you love them? That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. I like had a brain fart. Yeah. Yeah, I don't Fuck it. With the movies Connor tried to defend, is he right or is he wrong? I feel like there's some people like that defend X Men Three, and they're wrong. Yeah. I think there's some of the movies that we mentioned that honestly, like other people definitely have like liked. Yeah. You know, like there's definitely some that people are gonna be like, "What are you thinking?" Like, but. I guarantee we could find like one person that definitely likes Three Ninjas, High Noon, and Mega Mountain. <laughs> like, even and I want to like, meet that person. Dude, even there at, like, is from... definitely at least ten people on this planet with a Three Ninjas tattoo. Guaranteed. You think so? At least ten people. It's there's. Well, sh- I'm about I... to make it eleven. <laughs> 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 there's five. There's three people with Three Ninjas tattoo, and those three people know each other, and they have each ninja on their <laughs> on their back leg, <laughs> like a BFF tattoo. Yeah. You like grew up watching Three Ninjas. Like know all the lines to all the movies. <laughs> That's amazing. And it's really just those three actors. <laughs> it's just the three actors. We live in the glory days. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. That concludes this podcast. Yes. Uh, thank you, Gamefly, for sponsoring this episode. Remember, you get a free 30-day premium trial. when You go to GameflyOffer.com slash awesome. Connor. Yeah, and also uh, this episode is brought to you by Vinyl Me Please. If you want to join the best damn vet record of the month club, go to www.joinvmp.com slash awesome. Nicholas? Uh, this show is also brought to you by BarkBox. To receive one free month, go to getbarkbox.com slash awesome. Again, that's getbarkbox.com slash awesome to receive an extra month with BarkBox for free. Thank you. And Thanks. Snyder, where can people find you on Twitter? Uh, I'm at Nick underscore Sny, um, but if you want really bad tweets, go to at Hambone Facone. All right, guys, take it easy. Peace.